What's up guys, this is Giannis Outlaw here, and today we're going to be doing a pretty interesting review. We're going to be talking about a pistol not a ton of people know about. Well, this is the Steyr M9A1, Steyr's version of the Glock M&P, you know, the striker fired polymer framed do-it-all pistol. And I think they did a pretty decent job. Now there are some pros and cons to this pistol that we're going to talk about today, but as of right now I can tell you if you're looking to get one, I don't think that you're going to regret it. Other than the Glock or M&P or something like that, as you can see, this Steyr sort of looks like Robocop's backup gun, which I think is pretty cool as well. You can see right off the bat, it's a very low bore axis. It has a very unique grip angle, all of which we'll get into here in a second. So the Steyr that I have in my hands here is a nine millimeter. It holds 17 plus one. It's got a four inch barrel and it weighs 27 ounces. Very similar to another gun, which you see right here, the Glock 19. As you can see, they're very, very similar in size. And as a matter of fact, for once for the old Glock, they're very similar in grip angle too. Although the Steyr actually even has a slightly more extreme grip angle than the Glock, and it also has a slightly better bore axis in my opinion, which does lead to a uh, lot lower recoil. I have to admit, I was really, really pleasantly surprised about the recoil of this pistol. Now it's got a bit larger dust cover as you see there uh, with the uh, standard rail. Uh, the same as a Glock rail, it's just an accessory rail, it's not a Picatinny rail. I didn't test any lights on this, I have to admit, but again, I can't stress to you enough, it may look a little weird, but if they were trying to achieve a very low recoil impulse for a pistol about the same size as a Glock 19, they definitely achieved it. This pistol is very reliable and very durable. I would say it's on par with a Glock or an M&P or CZ. Some of the downsides that you'll see on this pistol, at least ergonomically, and for, my, for me, are going to be the sights. I don't know if you can see those, but those are the craziest sights I've ever seen on a pistol. I didn't really have much of an issue shooting with them. It just makes me feel weird. And another part of it is it just, it seems like they would be a little bit less durable. Like with the cuts in the middle like that, I feel like I could break this sight off relatively easy. But honestly, in practice, it did work relatively well. I think that if I owned this pistol, I would still change them out. I like to have my sights at least sort of uniform, at least in the same shape. Uh, they do make aftermarket Trigicon night sights for this, and if I purchased this pistol, I would definitely pick them up. Well, I shot about 500 rounds for this with no issues, which is amazing considering the fact that I use Freedom Munitions and this uh, polymer ammo here, and it ran them both, unlike a lot of other guns that I've tested this summer, like the M&P 2.0, for example. So you could say that the Steyr is even more reliable than the M&P. Some other things that you're going to want to know about this pistol is it's relatively unknown, so you're going to have trouble finding other accessories. You're not going to find too many trigger accessories. Uh, Trigicon does make sights for them, but you're going to be limited compared to something like a Glock or a 1911, for example. It does come with two magazines, and they're not that expensive. It's pretty accurate, I have to admit. Even though I didn't like the sights right off the bat and the trigger is weird, it's very light and it breaks relatively crisp. It's just a good, well done trigger, believe it or not. The only problem I have with it is there's not really an audible reset. You can hear it a little bit, I bet, while we're in here, but you cannot hear it on the field, and you can't really feel it either. But again, that's more of a training issue than anything else. If this was the only gun you shot, you wouldn't search for that sound or that feel to uh, release the trigger, because you would already know. So if this is going to be your only gun, I don't think that's going to be any issue at all. You'll just learn the reset and learn how to ride the reset, and you'll be good to go there. And as far as that goes, it's got the same uh, safety action trigger that the Glock does, although I think this one's done a little bit better. If I had to choose between this and a stock Glock trigger, I would choose this. Like I said, these sights worked really well for me. I shot anywhere from 50 to 75 yards without much of an issue, and up close, it was relatively quick. And I said, again, for a small pistol, this has very, very low recoil. For a overall price of around $400, what you get is you get a fairly unique gun that you're gonna have a hard time finding accessories for, although it's accurate, reliable, and dependable, and around the same weight as a Glock 19. The only thing you're gonna have to overcome is that relatively weird grip angle and feel the pistol. The other problem that I found uh, really quick was the texture of the pistol. I didn't like the texture at all, I felt it was too slippery, but I think that about almost every gun. So I threw some custom made sandpaper grips that I made out of a roll of skateboard tape on there, and it worked great. So other than the sights and the texture, it's pretty much a great pistol. I don't really see anything wrong with it that isn't personal preference. So I gotta say, for an unknown pistol, Steyr really knocked this one out of the park. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.